Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Next to me you can see part of the computer that I'm building currently. Uh, possibly the video is out already, I'll have it linked in that case. Uh, but the point of this video is not the computer itself. But how did I 3D print this huge part? Now well, obviously this is way too large for any of my 3D printers. And as you'll probably understand by the end of this video, it would also not make any sense to 3D print this as one piece, even if you had a printer large enough. What I want to show you in this video is how to properly split up a big model or even a small model that has just very inconvenient geometry for 3D printing into easily 3D printable and then most importantly as well easily assemblable uh, parts. The goal is that it's not just easy to assemble in the end, but also that you can see the assembling lines as little as possible. And to achieve that, there are two main components. There is where to split and there is how to locate the parts while gluing. First of all, I want to talk about where to split. And while it might seem obvious, uh, judging by what is uploaded to Thingiverse, it clearly is not obvious. Uh, when splitting your parts, you need to strategically think about how you're going to 3D print them later. While modeling, you can allow yourself some leniencies and uh, while I do sometimes keep in mind how I'm going to print it later, oftentimes I'm just going to model whatever uh, wild shapes I want and since it's 3D printing, it's basically always uh, manufacturable in the end. But once you get to the slicing in the part step, you want to really think about 3D printing. Let's take this rod here as an example. Now, the entire rod, of course, is too long for my print bed. But even if it wasn't, it would not make any sense to print it. This middle piece here is fairly complex and significantly larger than these long outside pieces. If I were to print this whole thing, then probably the way I would do it is like lay it flat and have these endpoints touch the build plate and then a bunch of support material under it, which would be a pain to remove and not look very great. But if I take these rods here and split them exactly where they meet the middle part, then when I glue it together, you will probably not even notice that there is a gluing here. And even if there's a slight gap, it will not be visually uh, disturbing you as uh, it makes sense to have a transition there. And if this transition is slightly more pronounced, it's not that big of a deal. And what that also results in is that these parts here are perfectly flat on one side and can easily lay down on a build plate and be printed without any support material or maybe a slight amount uh, depending on how your printer is set up. And then this middle piece can also be very simply 3D printed. Now, although this middle piece easily fits onto the build plate and I did print it in one piece, in retrospect, it would have actually made more sense to split it up even more. As you can see, there's this, uh, these two discs on the top and the bottom and then a significantly smaller ball in the middle. To 3D print this, I had to use support material to support the upper disc as uh, these overhangs would not be printable otherwise. And removing that support material was quite of a bit of a pain uh, as it really fused to the top and bottom and you couldn't get in there very really easily. What I should have done in retrospect is cut that middle ball part out and just had some little nubbins to locate it and 3D print this as three parts. It would have not required any support material and then assembling it would have been fairly straightforward and I could have probably done that in the same operation as I glued the two rods to it. So as you can see, by strategically cutting your print apart, you can very easily uh, make your life a lot simpler and Actually, in the end, you probably can't even tell. But in some cases, like these big arches here, it is just not possible to cut in a strategic location because it's just one big plane. Then, basically, uh, I usually just kind of go for symmetry, uh, but you can kind of cut it up uh, however you want it. Uh, there is no real right place to cut. What is very important, though, is that you can glue these parts together nicely in the end so that the transitioning line will be hidden as well as at all possible. And what is very important for this is to have some sort of locating feature. Once again, talking about Thingiverse, most models you find out there that are cut into multiple parts just have flat 
transition surfaces that are a pain to glue together because they will move on you. It's really hard to figure out how exactly it's supposed to be located and generally in the end it does not look very great. What would have been great uh, is to add some little nubbins or something. I'll show you a close up here of what I used here and it's very easy to have some pegs in one side of the part and a hole in the other side of the part and provided that you set up your uh, tolerances properly you can use tolerance test to kind of get a rough ballpark and then some maybe one or two test pieces uh, you can very easily have it so that with minimal cleanup work it will basically snap together fit very nicely the part will not be allowed to move in any direction anymore and you can easily glue it together and it will be perfect in the end. If you then also make sure that the surfaces you're gluing together are very flat, maybe add some Bondo to fill any not so nice transitions and after a coat of paint you probably can't even tell anymore that there is a transition there. However, if you try to glue it together without any locating features, well, Unless you are very patient and very skilled in gluing up, uh, you probably can about a lot. Plus, having a more complicated geometry also makes it more sturdy if your gluing job is not as strong as you might think. So here we are in Fusion now and you can see what you just saw in real life here and as the 3D model. Uh, this uh, is the, the shell for the computer and you can see here that I have a whole bunch of pieces and that's because this is the version of it where I've already cut it apart for 3D printing. I uh, just want to quickly show you uh, how this looks inside of Fusion. Uh, let's say for example uh, this piece here uh, as you can see it highlighted is a separate piece from uh, the other uh, pieces and if I hide it here you can see also see the locating geometry here. This is just a simple uh, five millimeter peg here and what is actually really important for it to work better is uh, this little chamfer. Uh, now you would never want to add the chamfer here because that will make it harder to go in. This will ensure that if the hole maybe doesn't have the most uh, sharp corners in the bottom uh, then the corner of this one will not interfere or more likely actually in 3D printing the corner of this one will bulge out slightly because it slightly overshoots and then will be larger than the actual diameter so adding a chamfer here mitigates that. Now you also want to make sure that this peg is slightly shorter than the hole is deep and that way you ensure that the face that is contacting is this face here which you want to have as little of a gap as possible and not this face here. So if we show this one again and hide the rod itself you can see the matching hole here and as you can see here I also chamfered it but not inside of here this is where the other one was chamfered but here as once again this corner might not be printed properly or the other one might have something where the corner is slightly rounded and this just makes it easier to fit in. And you can also uh, see that this diameter is slightly larger. Now how much larger this needs to be depends on your printer. There are different tolerance tests that you can print out to figure out how much larger you need to make this. Uh, but then it just simply fits together and is very easy like that. Now if you're doing a huge design like this one which has many mirrored parts uh, you're probably too lazy to design these features for all of them and it's totally not necessary. Like if I had this again you can see that here I did not design this feature. Uh, that's because I just exported this one rod here uh, and then printed it eight, eight times uh, so all the other ones don't necessarily need to be featured. That's just a quick trick to, to kind of save yourself some time inside of the designing software to not have to uh, individually draw all of these features for all of them. Uh, so here you can uh, see the feature that I uh, added for these uh, larger pieces to locate together. Uh, just same basic meth methodology, uh, two pegs that are uh, chamfered that then fit into the corresponding holes. And that just makes assembly quite simple. Now if you are uh, want to go a bit more advanced and I'm actually uh, just printing that out now that's going to be the reservoir for it and I wanted to challenge myself a bit to make it easier assemblable since I don't want to actually glue this together and uh, lock myself out of changing stuff in the future uh, I wanted them to be able to fit together uh, be built printed easily with almost no support material um, so what I settled on uh, is actually if you look at the section analysis uh, I created threads that fit together. 
Now, 3D printing threads is kind of a difficult topic. I've made a video about it in the past. Uh, you have to kind of be mindful that you have your tolerances set large enough so that it actually fits together in the end. But uh, I haven't printed these print parts yet, so I don't know if it's going to fit, but it ho should hopefully fit together. And then I can simply screw these pieces together and I don't even have to glue them. And they should fit nice, relatively nicely, but uh, even if it doesn't perfectly fit, uh, they are designed in a way where the connecting piece here ha naturally has a line in the design. So I don't mind if you can see a slight gap. Uh, it's just part of the design at that point. Now, uh, one, one part down here is still uh, uh, going to be glued, and that's just this back piece to this one. Now, size-wise, I could easily pr uh, print these two pieces, like this sh shell piece here, and uh, this uh, bracket that's going to be used for wall mounting as one part. But how would I print this? Either one, I would print it flat on this side, and then I'd need support material between here, which is going to be almost impossible to remove. Or I print it standing up, then I have a bunch of other support material that is going to be painful to remove. But if I print this piece separately and this piece separately, I can print them with almost no support material at all. Then just glue them together, and it's going to look nicer in the end, be easier, less work, and overall better. It's just a tiny bit more work to design, to design these parts separately. And with that, we're basically at the end of the video. If you're interested in what this piece is going to be used for, make sure to check out my uh, build log of the PC that this is uh, going to be for. Uh, I'll have it linked down below and up in the cards. And uh, Make sure to subscribe as well, since not all of these parts are out yet and uh, there's going to be much more coming. Also, if you have any questions to these techniques or other advanced 3D printing modeling techniques that you want to know more about, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll either get back to you there or make an entire video about it. So with that, thanks for watching and until next time.